simple random and convenience sampling. Two less objectives define simple random and convenience sampling. Explain the sources of bias and sampling. A census is a list of all individuals in the population among with certain characteristics of each individual. The United States does a census every 10 years and that census is to count how many people live in the United States. The number of people according to the U.S. Census for 2010 is almost 309 million people. This comes at a cost of $14.5 billion, which means the average cost per person is about $47. When we try to measure something from a population, it is very time-consuming and it's very expensive. A better way is to use a sample. If the sample is representative of the population, it's a lot quicker, easier, and less expensive. And then we can use the sample to make an inference about the population. We'll begin with what's called random sampling. Random sampling is the process of using chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. A simple random sample is a sample of size n taken from a population where every possible sample of size n has an equal chance of occurring. We abbreviate this SRS. A simple random sample will produce samples that are representative of the population. A convenient sample is one that's easily obtained, however it may not be representative of the population. Any study that uses this type of sampling generally have results that are suspect. The results should be looked upon with extreme skepticism. As this little slide says, this is an example of convenient sampling. Do you believe in the death penalty? She's calling out to this guy walking down the street. Okay, imagine this is our population. We have a random sample and then we have a convenient sample. And as we can see that a random sample is going to be better. It's going to be more representative than a convenient sample. There's many different types of convenient samples, but probably the most popular are those in which the individual and the samples are self-selected. They choose to participate in the survey. These are also known as voluntary response samples. Phone in polls are an example of self-selection. People select themselves for the poll by deciding to call in. Such a poll would be biased towards people with strong opinions, and these opinions may differ depending upon the program or network. For example, a phone-in poll on CNN commonly produces very different results than a phone-in poll on Fox News. If the target of the population is all voters, the results of neither can be considered representative. Neither is based on a random sample of all voters bias and sampling. If the results of the sample are not representative of the population, then the sample has bias. We're going to look at three types of bias. Sampling bias, non-response bias, and response bias. Sampling bias means that the technique used to obtain the individuals in the sample tend to favor one part of the population over another. Undercoverage is a type of sampling bias. Undercoverage occurs when the proportion of one segment of the population is lower in a sample than it is in the population. And we're going to look at a very famous case. The Literary Digest back in 1936. The magazine surveyed over 2 million people chosen from the magazine's subscription list, phone books, and car registrations. Even though the sample was large, it was unrepresentative of the population of voters because not everyone could afford a phone or a car during the Depression. Republicans tended to own phones and cars, which produced a sample with undercoverage of Democrats. As a result of this biased sample, the poll showed the Republican Landoff actually beating the actual winner, Democrat Franklin Roosevelt. Non-response bias exists when individuals selected to be in a sample do not respond to the survey and have different opinions from those who do. Non-response can be improved through the use of callbacks or rewards and incentives. Walmart is actually doing this and there's a lot of fast food restaurants that do this. You look on the back of the receipt, you call in this phone number and you can have a chance to win a prize. Response bias exists when the answers on the survey do not reflect the true feelings of the respondent. Now this can happen a number of ways. 
It could be due to interviewer error, misrepresented answers, words that are used in a survey question, sometimes are known as loaded questions, and the last one, the order of the question. We'll look at some examples. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Teachers should not be required to supervise their students during recess. If you disagree, you are saying that you do not think teachers should not supervise students. In other words, you believe that teachers should supervise students. If you use a negative word like not, consider highlighting the word or underlining or bolding to catch the respondent's attention. Here's an example of a loaded question. Given that the age of 18, people are old enough to fight and die for your country, don't you think they should be able to drink alcohol as well? Okay, this is a loaded question as as this question wants you to respond a certain way. This statement yields a response bias. It is better to say, do you think 18-year-olds should be able to drink alcohol? Do you say that traffic contributes more or less to air pollution than industry? Next question, would you say that industry contributes more or less to air pollution than traffic? Both these questions are asking the same thing. The only difference is the wording traffic and industry. This will yield different results. When the first question was presented, 45% blame traffic, 27% industry. When the second question was given, 24% blame traffic and 57% blamed industry. So the order of the question can change the way a person responds. Thanks for watching.